Uh, well, today the uh, masters of mankind are uh, uh, multinational corporations and financial institutions, but the lesson still applies, and it helps explain why the state corporate complex is indeed a threat to freedom and, in fact, even survival. Well, by now there are uh, important uh, elaborations of Smith's truism applied to the modern world. Uh, the most uh, significant and sophisticated version that I know is by uh, political economist uh, Thomas Ferguson, what he calls his investment theory of politics, which in brief uh, and simplified essentially views U.S. elections as uh, occasions in which uh, coalitions of private investors uh, coalesce uh, to invest to control the state. It turns out to be a thesis of quite high predictive success over more than a century, as he shows. Uh, what it means, in effect, is that uh, elections are pretty much bought and that the buyers expect to be rewarded. And that happens all the time. It was illustrated very clearly in the... Uh, last U.S. presidential election in 2008, uh, President Obama's victory uh, traces largely to a, a huge uh, influx of capital from the financial institutions, especially toward the end of the campaign. They prefer preferred him to his uh, opponent, uh, McCain, and they expected to be rewarded, and of course they were. Uh, the country at that time was mired in a deep recession, uh, so Obama's first act was to select an economic team. It was drawn almost entirely from those who had caused the severe economic crisis that he inherited. He systematically avoided uh, critics of their practices, including quite prestigious ones, Nobel laureates. Uh, actually, the business press uh, wrote rather ironically about this uh, Bloomberg News did a review of Obama's economic team, went through each one of them, uh, looked at their records, and said, concluded that uh, these people shouldn't be uh, on the economic team to fix up the economy. They should be getting subpoenas, which was pretty correct. They didn't, of course. Well, not surprisingly, the team chose measures which rewarded the major culprits who are now uh, richer and more powerful than before, and uh, poised to lead the way to the next and uh, probably more severe financial crisis. Now, there was recently an interesting article about this by uh, the special inspector of the bailout programs, Neil Borofsky. Uh, he wrote a bitter condemnation of the way it was executed. Uh, he points out that the legislative act that authorized the bailout was a bargain. Uh, the financial institutions that were responsible for the crisis uh, would be saved by the taxpayer and the victims of their misdeeds, in fact real crimes, the victims would be somewhat compensated by measures to protect uh, home values and preserve uh, home ownership. It was mostly a housing crisis. Well, only the first part of the bargain was kept. The financial institutions were rewarded uh, lavishly for causing the crisis, and they were forgiven for outright crimes, but the rest of the program uh, floundered. Uh, as Borofsky points out, I'm quoting him, uh, foreclosures continue to mount uh, with eight to 13 million filings forecast over the program's lifetime, while the biggest banks are 20% larger than they were before the crisis, and control a larger part of the economy than ever. They reasonably assume that the government will rescue them again if necessary. Indeed, credit rating agencies, uh, credit rating uh, agencies incorporate future gov uh, government market uh, bailouts into their assessments of the largest bank. That means exaggerating market distortions that provide them with an unfair advantage uh, over smaller institutions which continue to struggle. So in short, as he puts it, Obama's programs were 
a giveaway to Wall Street executives and a blow in the solar plexus to their defenseless victims.